Greetings, everybody. Many, many times over the last year, I've said, I'll bet you have, what a shame that we're doing this virtually and not in person. But there's rarely been a time I've meant it as emphatically as I do now, because uh, ordinarily we would be in Naples, Florida, enjoying the annual Boilermaker weekend down there. I know many of you watching would have been there, and those who haven't before, I hope you'll join us, let's say, next year when uh, we're back uh, to our normal schedule. But in lieu of that opportunity, I've been asked to give you an update on the campus, uh, life at Purdue during this very eventful last year, and I'll endeavor to do that now, as I would if we were together down there in the sunshine. The only place to start in thinking about the uh, calendar year 2020 at Purdue or any other school uh, is uh, that, uh, how we operated uh, during the COVID pandemic. And of course, the starting point is that unlike many schools, we did operate. We were there in the fall with a largely residential experience, at least as much as any school our size. So let me just tell you a little bit about that, that situation and how we dealt with it. Here's a summary of the most important tactic among many that we employed, our testing and tracing a system, uh, which took all summer to devise and was constantly upgraded and enhanced during the fall. But here are just some basic results. We uh, tested every student, had to submit a negative test before arriving. That meant we found some COVID positive students and intercepted them before they could come to campus and enter and infect anyone else. And then during the semester, as you see here, we administered well over 100,000 tests. Anyone with symptoms was asked to come in right away. And then we did what we called surveillance testing, taking a sample of roughly 10% of the student and staff population each week. You'll see here that we had uh, relatively modest rates of positivity. The plus in semester test means those who did test positive the most important thing, and the thing we watched the most closely, was the severity. I asked our medical team to devise a six-point uh, or six-level scale, because one thing that would have caused us to reverse field and, and uh, close the campus would have been if we had any meaningful number of students or staff becoming very seriously ill. That did not happen, as you'll see here, over 80 percent of our students and and uh, well over two-thirds of our staff had only the very mildest cases, and we had almost none that required uh, a significant attention or hospitalization. Maybe the uh, most important factor among many that allowed us to operate in the fall was the, the uh, behavior of faculty, staff, and especially students. Uh, each of us uh, took the Purdue Pledge, which you see here, and uh, committed to practice uh, the sort of behaviors that would protect uh, each individual, but also everyone around him or her, and of course the institution itself and our ability to uh, continue operations. I just can't say enough, especially about our young people and the way in which they uh, complied with the inconveniences and the impositions of this pledge. It was really something to see. And anybody who worries about the character or quality or commitment to others of today's young people, at least the young Boilermakers, uh, can, uh, can look at the record of last fall and feel, and feel very good about it. The um, uh, way we taught had to change, of course. First thing was that any uh, faculty member who uh, was in the vulnerable category, that is above a certain age or had certain uh, pre-existing uh, health conditions, we didn't want in the classroom. And uh, uh, so that led to many of our courses having to be converted to an online format. Uh, many others were taught in a hybrid way, meaning maybe one in-person meeting a week and uh, the others uh, online. And, uh, but 70% of our courses involved at least some in-person uh, encounters and experience. And this included many of our lab courses, which is a very STEM-oriented university these days, means almost every student. Um, so this was not the residential experience that our students uh, expected or have uh, experienced at other times, but it was uh, as uh, good as we could do, we thought, consistent with the safety of the community, and it was 
a, a uh, higher percentage than any school in our uh, class that we're in our uh, size category that we're aware of. Here's just a partial list of the uh, actions we took, the steps we took. Uh, took the investments we made to make Purdue safer in, in the fall. I won't enumerate them all. I, I, I simply want to illustrate that we were determined to leave nothing to chance and leave no dollar unspent that might make our classrooms and other spaces um, a little bit more secure uh, for all. I, I do want to single out the top line on this uh, chart. Our student ambassadors, uh, well over a hundred of them, uh, putting in many, many hours, encouraging their fellow students to abide by the pledge, uh, handing out masks if someone forgot one, both modeling and urging good behavior. They were really an important factor in uh, generating that terrific student compliance I talked about. Now let's talk about Purdue today. Uh, since we uh, were alive and kicking all fall, what, uh, what, what was going on? What did we look like? The first thing I want to mention is that for the first time in our history, Purdue University now serves over 100,000 students. This is partially due to the growth of the West Lafayette campus and also the addition three years ago of Purdue Global, about which I'll say a little bit more. But uh, over 100,000 uh, people are now benefiting from Purdue education in its various forms. Here's our undergraduate enrollment at West Lafayette, uh, a record total even in the COVID year. You'll see that some of these students uh, opted for the online only version of our, um, of our uh, fall curriculum. About half of that uh, 4,400 uh, were international students, most of whom could not get here, would have come to campus, but could not get here because of travel restrictions. So um, something like 8% of our student body chose the course of online, but all the rest uh, wanted the residential experience and came here even knowing it wouldn't be quite what it has been or uh, will be in the future. We have uh, enrolled a record number of Hoosier students uh, during the last few years. You'll see that that number was declining and uh, very much as a part of our um, strategic purpose to, uh, while maintaining Purdue standards, uh, make a Purdue education available to as many students who uh, could meet those standards as wanted it. You'll see that we've seen a lot of growth and that included students from our home state who still represent a majority of the undergrads on campus. And here you see the fact that um, we uh, had, have brought up dramatically during the, uh, the last several years the number of Hoosiers that we have offered admission to West Lafayette. An Indiana student who applies here has a, um, a better than 70% chance of being accepted and a better than 90% chance of being accepted to one of our campuses, um, one of our two regionals, as an option if they're not we don't believe quite ready for West Lafayette. Our students are still succeeding as I know uh, all of you have in life. And here you'll see that about 95% of our recent graduates were employed within six months or at least had, pursuing further education within six months of leaving. And um, uh, earning salaries that are very, very competitive with graduates of other schools. We've been working very hard to further diversify the student body at West Lafayette. This is not easy uh, for a school uh, uh, like ours, any school in the country. We all are working uh, diligently to do this, but we've had a lot of growth. You'll see here growth in numbers of URM students. You'll see a uh, doubling of the number, total number of minority students on campus. And um, uh, even higher uh, increases in the most recent classes like our freshmen. Uh, we're doing a lot to try to do better than this, but the uh, gains are uh, noteworthy and encouraging. One of the most direct things we have done is start our own high schools. I hope you're aware of this by now. Our first of what are now three uh, Purdue Polytechnic high schools in inner cities in Indiana, two in Indianapolis, one in South Bend, uh, is uh, in its fourth year. And so the first graduates are emerging. You'll see here that We've been, at, uh, been able to ad and admit 48 students. We hope they'll all come. We have raised enough money to 
uh, make certain that economics does not become the last barrier after they have proven themselves academically ready for a Purdue education. And while these numbers is just the first year, and while these numbers are uh, uh, only as big as they are, I will tell you that uh, if these students, if two-thirds of these students say yes to our offer, and we hope we'll do better than that, it will double the number of uh, young people we've been able to recruit from the entire Indianapolis public school system uh, during um, most recent years. And it will double the number of black students that we've been able to attract. So it's a great start. And when we have three schools up and operating, if we can achieve numbers like this, we will make a very substantial difference having built our own pipeline when the pool of minority students and low-income students is uh, so distressingly small otherwise. I talked about Purdue Global, our online university. It's growing uh, very smartly. It is uh, more than paying its uh, bills and, and um, offers the promise of further growth in the future. It's very important to remember uh, the difference between Purdue Global and the rest of our uh, campuses. Uh, as you'll see uh, here, uh, it is almost two-thirds female. It is mainly working adults. The average age is well over uh, 30. And um, uh, it is really aimed at one of the most important target audiences in America, everyone now realizes, and that is people who didn't complete college the first time. Most of the students who come to Purdue Global made a start at college, but didn't get through, and came out, if, if anything, with uh, some debt. And it, our goal is to help them get to a much better uh, place in life, and that's what the record shows happens for those who uh, do succeed. Uh, you know that we have tried very hard to make Purdue a, uh, uh, as affordable and accessible as we can. Um, we've now pledged not just this coming year, but the year after, that tuition will once again be held constant. And here you see some um, ways of, of expressing that. Uh, today's freshmen were in elementary school the last time Purdue raised tuition. And we have kept the Indiana tuition level below $10,000. Uh, if we had raised prices at the uh, average rate uh, that has gone on elsewhere in the Big Ten, this would have been the outcome. You see that um, the annual difference right now for an Indiana student is uh, over $1,300, so $5,000 over the course of a four-year degree. Those students from out of state uh, are saving, of course, even more. And you'll see that we lowered um, We've lowered room and board rates while they have increased substantially at other schools. The total savings for an Indiana student now come to essentially the cost of a year's tuition, or as the bottom of the slide says, four years at the price of three. Here's what's been going on elsewhere with regard to room and board. Some other schools have begun to moderate their tuition increases. A couple have even held them constant for a year or two but uh, many of the same ones raised other fees, such as room and board. We haven't. As I said, we've brought them down just slightly. And you'll see that room and board at Purdue is now the least expensive uh, in the Big Ten, a big change from a little while ago. For uh, resident students, that is Indiana students living on campus, it's less expensive now to attend Purdue than it was 10 years ago. Same for out-of-state students. And you'll see the widening gap between us and the average uh, cost at a, another Big Ten school. And here's what's happened to debt. Not surprisingly, when you hold the price down, um, uh, debt has declined with it. And uh, we're very, very pleased with this reduction uh, across the entire student body. We sometimes calculate, by the way, that a, um, a family, that uh, families collectively have saved over a billion dollars uh, compared to what would have happened if we had risen along with the rest of the, um, uh, the rest of our competition. Uh, here is the default rate uh, for Boilermakers, uh, uh, far below that of other public universities. And as the box at the bottom points out, uh, well over half of that small percentage that uh, are not making their payments are those who uh, it did not graduate. If you graduated from Purdue, there's almost zero chance that you will not be paying back or able to pay back your student loans on time. One of the major 
strategic decisions we made several years ago was to become even stronger at the STEM disciplines at which Purdue has always excelled, which were always part of our land-grant assignment, uh, and which are so central to the success of individuals and our overall society in this information high-tech age. And so you'll see that the percent of undergrads in one or another of the STEM disciplines has risen uh, very sharply. It's, we're now probably fourth in America behind two of the UC uh, California schools and Georgia Tech uh, in, in terms of the uh, percentage of our students studying uh, science or technology. We have really worked hard to become, as we call it, entrepreneur you, encouraging any faculty member, any student for that matter, with an idea to pursue it, uh, patent it if that is appropriate, and, and to start, uh, or try to start, an enterprise based on it. And um, uh, we have uh, uh, become one of the top universities in the world in all these categories, and um, the number of startups here has exceeded that at almost every school in the country. I think we've been second uh, behind uh, Stanford, ahead of uh, lesser known places like Harvard uh, and uh, MIT in most recent years. I want to say just a few words about another uh, mission that we believe is important to Purdue's future, but for that matter, uh, our, to the future of our uh, surrounding neighbors, uh, neighborhoods in the uh, greater uh, Tippecanoe County area and really the whole state of Indiana, and that is to make of our school uh, and, and its environment a more dynamic and vibrant and economically successful place that will allow us to attract uh, even better faculty, even better students, and to uh, contribute to the prosperity uh, of uh, our surrounding community. So the west side of campus in 2014, already a lot of changes had happened, including the bypass that you'll, you'll see that was uh, uh, built by the state of Indiana and the, uh, and, um, uh, under a previous governor. But uh, it's the investments we've made since then that have made the most difference. Those of you who haven't been to campus, I think would be very, very surprised by uh, what you'll find when you do get here. The Discovery Park District project, um, which uh, began with our uh, narrowing of State Street, our beautification of State Street, and turning State Street really into just another campus uh, boulevard and not the state highway that it was during our whole previous history, uh, was a, a, a first step, a trigger here. But you'll see that many great companies have, have come to uh, locate here uh, in uh, either our pre-existing uh, research parks or the new Discovery Park District, uh, which sits uh, uh, along state and airport roads and out around the airport. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, and I could offer more illustrations than this, uh, we, we do believe we see an unmistakable uh, enhancement of the great reputation Purdue's always had nationally. Uh, one always has to take some of these ratings with a little salt, but uh, the accumulation of them, I think, is, makes for a pattern that's, that is uh, pretty clear, that uh, we are not only Indiana's flagship university, but one of America's, and, uh, and growing, I believe, in stature and reputation uh, all the time. Again this year, we had record applications, even in this COVID year when they are down nationally, and, a, and by far a record uh, applications from uh, young people from the other 49 states. I think evidence that, once again, that the renown of your university is, is strong and, and improving. So uh, there's a quick tour through uh, the university that we are. Um, I'll just say that um, the era ahead, we all know, will be a different one. We're thinking very, very hard about what a post-COVID world will look like in terms of how you operate a university like this, how many students and what kind will choose to come, whether they will be looking for a full four years on campus or some uh, blend of online and remote and maybe uh, internships, co-op, experiential, as we say, education along the way. Uh, so we take uh, some heart from the progress of the last few years, but we know it is absolutely no guarantee um, of success in the future. We're thinking right now about ways to make Purdue uh, uh, as, as well suited to the 
2020s as we think it has been over, over the last few years and, and thinking about what investments will make that more likely. So there's a quick tour. I, uh, I hope it was of some use. I hope even more that I'll be able to make a similar presentation to you in person uh, in Naples next year. Thanks for watching. Boiler up.